Welcome to the hand trap tier list for the September 2024 format. It's going to be a short format because October we are already getting a new set, Rage of the Abyss. It's already going to shake up the format, but there's a lot of regionals. There is also a YCS at the end of the month, which people should be aware of how to prepare for. Before we begin, like this video, subscribe, check out the other deck tier list that we made on the channel and of course share this with a friend so they can tell you how much i'm wrong with all this tier list let's get to it so let's start off with mourner um the tiers that i put here are strong main strong side okay main and okay side and not worth it i think this is the division i like to make for hand traps maybe also board breakers but i think hand traps need to be I mean, considered as obviously not every deck is going to run hand traps, but if you do, where does that stand? So Mourner, I think is like probably okay main and it's probably always been okay main right now. I think it's mainly because of the fact that Mourner is a card you play when you already have so many hand traps. So let's think about the snake eye builds over the last year, I guess. Mourner would usually be the last hand trap you put in just because you have the room. It was a little bit better in times where you would have the Abel Star, obviously, Princess, stuff like that that you can hit with Mourner and they are very impactful. But now I think people are going to be on less hand traps or just more like powerful high impact ones. So I think it's probably just okay at this point. I think people are just going to play like more like, you know, the the basic ones and, and not necessarily go into into Mourner. Now, Winter Cherries, I mean, everybody says that like, I mean, if you're already playing Requiem in your Fiendsmith engine, in your extra deck, like why would you not play this? Just because it's a minus one, essentially, from your hand. Like you don't gain any advantage and you don't necessarily lose your opponent any advantage, right? Because no one deck is revolved around one extra deck card currently. Even if you get rid of the Requiem and your opponent has access, like obviously with Beatrice gone, it's much harder. But if they already have access to Fiendsmith, they can put up a, a sequence and they can still fuse. If they get tracked, they have enough Light Fiends, they have Moon, right? So it's never been worth it, right? It's never been worth it. So I think it's no different here. Um, and I think Dogwood is probably likely still gonna be a thing because like snake eye might have a little bit of a shorter combo i guess but not really if you think about it it's still gonna be long you bell has a very long combo this card is gonna be worth it in my opinion the fact is that like without lacrima like fiends with lacrima is banned now there's no time win condition in the extra deck people were playing lacrima and this I don't really see it changing. I don't really see a reason why it would actually change. Um, so I think we're still going to see Dogwood. I was saying Dogwood should be banned. We'll see. Maybe that happens during the next list. If Konami wants to keep going in a trend where decks are like long combos, one cards, that's fine, I suppose. It's like a bad kind of a weird design decision but it's okay if they want to decide to do that but on the other hand they have to balance it in terms of time and this card is just unfair bestials so let's put all of them i didn't include serenir because serenir is like not a it's like a branded card to be honest but i think these are probably strong main deck ones like all of them to be honest with fiendsmith still around it's going to be one of the main power access points to snake eye which is like so hit right now and it's good versus you bell it can bait out a phantom, unfortunately, like you might, like the first action might be a phantom, which is just a horrendous card. Imagine if I could to start my turn, shuffle back like a Cartesia in the dark and just make a Granguignol. Isn't it absurd that you can make this like three times a turn even? It's so busted. But I think Bestials are great. Even without the access to Beatrice that le the level six-ness of this gets you, the body... Bestial Magnumwood searching for another Bestial. The Interruption, like every single one of them is an Interruption. These cards are great. Now Nibiru, on the other hand, I'm conflicted because now obviously there's no Apo, right? Apollosa is gone. You quote unquote cannot play around Nibiru. Is it true though? I don't actually think so. I think you can still play under Nibiru. Obviously, DDD, Wave King High Caesar, still exists. That card is still legal. That card is still easily, relatively easily accessible with Fiendsmith. People are gonna put it on the board, which means that it will prevent you from playing Nibiru. And if you nib before, that's fine. They still don't have to commit to a normal summon. And I'm talking about, obviously, like, Yubel doesn't really care about Nibiru. And Snake Eyes, honestly, probably won't as well. This is why I think, contrary to what people might instinctively think, Nibiru is not, probably not that good. Droll, I'm like tempted to put it at not worth it. 
Like, who cares? Right now, I think when Rage of the Abyss comes out, this becomes a strong main deck option because of Mulchami Fuwaris. However, like, now, it's not good against Ubel, and it's honestly not that good against Snake Eyes as well. If they already search with Snake Eye Ash, if they search the Poplar, they're already, they, they've already done what they need to do. They, they have everything at that point. So I think it might be not worth it. Like, the two best decks, or maybe the three, let's go with Tenpai, maybe Sprite, Ubel, Snake Eyes, it's just not good. Lancia is not worth it. Skullmeister is a one for one that just, just isn't enough. Like, you would much rather have a bestial that gives you advantage, additional interruption, and a body. Shifter is the strongest hand trap in the game still. If your deck can run it, and maybe even if your deck can't run it, you will want to play it. Alongside with Ash Blossom, which is just the all-around best hand trap that hits the most things. Just very good in the, in the main. Now, Ogre is interesting. So let's think about what Ogre does. In Snake Eyes, it can hit Snake Eye the Abel Star. Not worth it. In Ubel, it can hit Nightmare Pain. It can hit... I mean, hitting the Yama is pretty interesting, I guess. But again, when it comes to Ubel, every hand trap needs to be looked at as if there's already a Phantom of Ubel. It could be good against Desiree, maybe? Like Desiree, Chain Ogre. That works because it's not going to be equipped anymore. But again, Phantom. So I think it's probably going to be... Actually, I think I want to, and, and of course, it was good against Sang and Summoning, which is a one. I don't know if people are going to even play Tenpai. I think I am gonna, I'm going to put it at okay main. It It's become weaker. Opening of the Spirit Gates is at one. That's also a thing. I think I'm going to keep it at okay main because I don't think it's like completely not worth it. And also Bell. Bell is weird. Like, why do we, do we even care about what Bell does again? Like, if you have a room for Hand Trap, would you rather have a Bestial or Bell in your hand? I think that in terms of like Snake Eye, it hasn't been popular in a while. But if Branded starts seeing play, then maybe this is a pretty good out to some things. But the, the problem is with this is that I don't want to put it in the main. And I really don't think it's that good in the side. Like what's okay side? It's like not even a category. I think maybe it could be a tech option. It's good against Ubel from the Graveyard Summon, but again, you have to look at everything as if there's a Phantom. DD Crow might be a strong side option. It's like mid-tier-ish. Again, hitting the extra Branded Fusion out of the Branded Graveyard. Hitting the very little bit of follow-up that Snake Eyes has right now, or the IP. I mean, it's solid, but Bistials can do it better. This could also work against like non-monster cards, which is good. So I think DD Crow is actually... It's actually pretty solid overall, like not even in this format, just overall good. Uh, if you want graveyard removal to make sure your opponent doesn't get to Phantom, again, Bestials are better. So maybe it's like okay side, maybe okay side. Valor still goaded and Imperm still goaded. I think these are just like, if you have a deck that runs hand traps, you put three Ash, three Imperm and three Valor before everything else right now. So it's like the three, the Trinity, the Holy Trinity right now. Um, these cards are exceptionally good. Yeah, they're very good. I think that Gamma might be a sleeper. Let's put Gamma and Delta. Like, think about this. Even maybe okay main. No capity cap. Right? If you're going second or if you're a Tenpai player, why not have, like, one Gamma, two Delta, one Driver? This does so much against Ubel. So much. I think it actually might be, like, an okay main option. Right? Like, Gamma is, is an excellent hand trap, obviously, but Delta is so good against Ubel. Like, negating Field Spell, negating Opening, negating Nightmare Pain, these are good negates. And, like, Ogre can do it too. It might be even better than Nibiru at this point. I kind of like this. I like this. Chaos Hunter is not worth it. Melchami Perulia is definitely a strong side deck option in most decks right now. You want to get to your board breakers. Same goes with Phantasme. Like, these are a couple. Like, this This is the, the, the side deck trio right now. You want to draw with Melchami into Phantasme and then draw into a Dogwood. Like, this is what you want out of your side deck. Legit. So, I think this is... Like, these are very solid in the side. They will probably be in a lot of side decks. Like, even the branded side deck. Like, it's three of each if you're going to a tournament. And then, I think this is going to be an okay main option but only in decks that can run it. Obviously, because not every deck can run it, it's mostly going to be like, if Voiceless Voice or Melodious come back, Drytron if it decides to make a comeback, um, those light decks, right? We're getting a new Dominus card soon. We're also getting a new Melchami soon. So it's going to mix up like two very good hand traps are joining this pool next format. 
Let me know what you guys think about this. I like this. I'm confident in this. This is based. And of course, I might be wrong. So I will need you to leave it down in the comments below and let me know. Like this video, subscribe, share this with a friend. And I'll see you next time. Peace.